Um, so we're going to start by talking about plain weaves and fabric terminology. So the way the fabric comes off the bolt, like this, I think we've talked about this before, this is the selvage, which is the manufactured edge. And on plain weaves, and I've got some diagrams here that I will pass around. Um, plain weave is one under, one over. So I'm just going to pass some of these around. And there's a warp and a weft. And the warp goes with the selvage. So when they say straight with the grain, they're talking about straight with the warp, which is lengthwise. And on garments, this is the vertical on a garment. Cross grain is weft. Okay. Plain weaves do not stretch warp. There's a little bit of stretch this way. But they do stretch on the bias. Plain weaves, satin weave, twills, and it shows you the um, diagrams of what they look like. Basket weave, I'm going to pass this down. Uh, satin weave, twill, herringbone, stripes, uh, bridal satins, so keep that going. And here's our warp and weft diagram. Okay, now there's some other terminology you need to know. Uh, there's something called gray goods, and it's G-R-E-I-G-E. -E. It's a French term, and it has to do with unfinished fabric that comes directly off the loom or knitting machine. So gray goods then goes to a converter to be dyed or processed or have finishing. So I'll pass that down. So all the different kinds of processing that are available, and man, there's more coming. Um, processing, embossed, puckered, flocked, waxed, foiled, devore, which is a chemical burnout. Distressing, stone washing, fuse melting, bonded, coated, bleeding, aging, shrinking, puckering, breathable, wickable. That's just one. And then there's enhancements. Flame retardant, vitamin perfume infused, ultraviolet screened, photosensitive, heat reactive, cold reactive, heat resistant, waterproof, manipulated, which would be pleated, quilted, crushed. Uh, surface embellishments, beaded, embroidery, applique, which is um, the bag that you did. It's like that. You put something on top and you stitch around it. And then in the 21st century, we have wearable tech. It's like it's just zooming in from there. So 21st century is smart fabric, smart textiles, military aeronautical, deep sea research, and then the newest is really um, 3D printed weaves. That's coming uh, to the point where it's not really weave. It's a new engineered fiber structure that can do all sorts of things. So this is the stuff that's in research now. Um, all right, then there's aluminizing, awning, blended carbon, fiberglass, flame resistant, uh, and vinyl fabric, just to name a few. So this is a whole list of processing. Okay, so we're done with plain weave. All right, so plain weaves, cottons, gauze, um, old world fabrics are all plain weaves. So that's you know one over, one under. What gets more complicated are things that are combination weaves. So combination weaves also are jacquards, J-A-C-Q-U-A-R-D, um, fancy weave or figurative weave. So what I want to show you with jacquards, and I'll pass that down, originated in China, and then jacquard is the French inventor who turned it into uh, a manufacturing loom. So that was uh, early 1800s. Um, and materials like damask, brocade, matelassé, and tapestry are all these kind of jacquard weaves. And this is a jacquard loom, so you'll get a chance to see that. Okay, so this is, this is polyester, but this is a jacquard fabric. And the thing about jacquard fabrics is that they appear to be double-sided. So you see that pattern from both sides. It reverses. 
um, this is a jacquard. And designers will very often like to use both sides. So especially with, you know, a jacket that has a collar that turns, mm -hmm. the collar could be this mm -hmm. and the front could be this. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, I find that it's up to me which side I want to use. Mm -hmm. um, so these are, let's pass these down. These are all jacquards. This is a jacquard. Uh, these, are, these are all polyester because the original jacquards would have been silk and they're very expensive. Um, so this is also a jacquard. The back is not quite as usable, but it is. It's, it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. But these are all polyester. Um, you see this on um, tablecloths and uh, upholstery fabric as well. So here's another one, not quite as reversible, but it, it's still there. Okay, here's another <coughs> one. Right. Matt Lasse. This is Matt Lasse. It's very interesting fabric. There's also a hand version of this called Trapunto, which is a hand quilting method where these are all padded. So here's Matt Lasse, and then there's a leather equivalent of Matt. It's an imitation of the idea of Matt Lasse. Yeah, so pass those down together. Uh, then there are other weaves which are part of this same group. Dobby weave is a pattern fabric like jacquard weave, but the patterns are smaller. Uh, it produces an all-over figured fabric. So this is a Dobby. So see, these are all jacquard weave. This is a, a modern version of a jacquard weave. So you see the two sides. So this would be a much more modern looking fabric. Um, this is a jacquard. This is probably an acetate. And see, here's another one that's a jacquard weave. And also a very modern print, but it's a jacquard weave. It's the two-sided figurative weave. Um, so now, see, these are not quite as usable on the wrong side because the threads could get caught, but they're still, it's still the same idea. Upholstery fabric, jacquard. Uh, this is another jacquard. This is really an interesting one. So that's one side, that's the other side. There's another one with this. A lot of contrast. That's really cool. Yeah. And then this one is a stretch. You can't quite tell. It's stretch uh, in one direction only. Jacquard weave. So let's do cottons, which is a plain weave. And I'm actually going to start with one of the oldest looking ones, which is gauze. So this one is cotton. Gauze, um, linen, gauze is the weave. This particular one is a cotton fiber. But this is what you would have seen in ancient Egypt this kind of fabric. It's very light, very airy, uh, especially for hot climates, and this sort of texture is how you know that it's gauze. It's kind of inherent in the weave. Uh, okay, this is gingham, and I want to show you this in particular, because this is, gingham is a, is a very old, associated with the Midwest American fabric. Um, if any of you have read the original Wizard of Oz, Dorothy wears a blue gingham dress. Mm. This is gingham. This mm. is the print. It's a fairly cheap cotton. Um, and when they say homespun, it means that the woman would have had her own loom. So it would be homespun. She would weave it. And it might be something like this. So this one, you know, a lot of these names are French names, and when they get to the United States, we do peculiar things to the way we pronounce them. Uh, this one, V-O-I-L-E, the French pronounce voile. If you go downtown and you ask for voile, they're going to say, I don't know. And so then you say boil, which is the American Midwestern pronunciation of voile. Okay. This is what it is. It's a very thin fabric. It's quite a beautiful fabric. This one has uh, a pattern woven into it. And then we get into Italian cotton shirting fabric. It just means that it's a tight weave. It is um, high quality cotton, 
processing is higher quality, so it is smoother. So Italian shirts might be made out of, men's shirts might be made out of this. And then I want to show you this one, because this was uh, one of the early samples of recycled cotton. Um, and it's from company, I don't know if they're still there, but it's, I'm actually impressed with how soft it is. And so in the beginning, they would take the cotton remnants, reprocess them, and unless they bleached it out, they would be stuck with whatever color that was. So they were, they were hard to match. But that's, that's kind of evolved quite a bit um, since then. But you can feel what this feels like. So recycling and upcycling has become a big thing. Rayon is an interesting fabric. It um, was really invented at the end of the 19th century as a way to imitate silk. And it is reprocessed wood fiber. So technically, um, all of these are plant fibers. Uh, so cotton, uh, rayon. So rayon was meant to imitate silk, which was very expensive and hard to manage because it had to be, you know, it has to be dry cleaned. If you wash it, it shrinks. The only problem with rayon is that it tends to be light sensitive. So uh, blouses that are made out of rayon that are like summer blouses worn in the sun, they can get brittle after a while. Um, but all of these are rayon fiber, but the knits are really different. So, you know, th they have taken this to a very high quality. This one is a rayon spandex blend, which means it stretch. has stretch, but it is cool and uh, airy. And rayon is a very nice summer fabric. And then this one is uh, viscous is really just, they're saying the same thing. They're, they're talking about viscous rayon. Uh, Viscous or rayon is often used as an imitation on, um, for silk for lining for jackets because it's not as expensive as silk would be. So, and it's cool to the touch because this is a natural fiber. Remember I talked about this before. Natural fibers are cool to the touch. Um, so this one is actually quite cold. We'll let it cool off in the air. That's rayon lining fabric. This is tensile, which is a brand name, yarn dyed shirting. Um, so the yarns are dyed before it's woven and it looks like it's a plain weave, but you can see, you see the different colors of the yarns here. So very high quality rayon. Uh, rayon is very soft. And then this is a batik rayon. And so this is, this feels more like it's traditional feel. And when we talk about the feel of things, how it feels in your hand, that's called the hand of the fabric, how it feels in your hand. Okay, so this one is a batik print, rayon. Uh, linen, hemp, and bamboo. Well, we use this for bed cover. Yeah, so what I want you to see is, and these are flax seeds. So, flax seeds. Uh, very, very ancient. This is one of the oldest fabrics. And they actually think that weaving, not necessarily weaving, but processed fibers are older than pottery. The thing about linen, it's very cool and airy, wrinkles like crazy. So um, the thing is that, you know, you put linen on and in a hot climate, you're just a wrinkled mess. But that's the nature of the way it looks. So whenever you look at um, movies of uh, 19th century, uh, let's say, explorers in Egypt, and they're wearing those white linen suits, if they don't look wrinkled, it's wrong. Mm. Um, and it's like, I almost feel like there's no point in ironing it. I mean, good luck with that. <laughs> so, but it is a very cool, airy kind of fabric. And this one is organic linen. So as we get into ecofabrics and organic, um, it really has more to do with how it's processed and how it's woven. It's just no pesticides. That's all it means. Okay, this is, so these are some of the newer fabrics. Uh, bamboo, 
Uh, but this is bamboo woven. Uh, this is bamboo crepe, very nice fabric. So remember again, the fiber is bamboo. The weave is whatever the weave is. Polyester and bamboo carbon. And it has a little bit of stretch, not very much, a little bit, but it's very soft. All right, now we're going to get into luxury fabric. Um, okay, so here's what I'm going to show you. We're going to start with the thinnest and most transparent. So this one is a super thin silk. These are all silk, and you'll feel that they are cool to the touch. Polyester warms up to room temperature really fast, and that's, that's one of the ways I know, by just feeling if it's cool. My suspicion is that it's real. Um, this is what I want to show you about these. The lighter the chiffon, the more expensive it is. And look at this. So the thing about chiffon is it is almost a kinetic fabric. So if you walk into a room with it, it moves. As you walk through the room, it moves. So it is, it almost has a language all its own. And chiffon is very transparent. Not, well, really more translucent. So this is uh, silk chiffon, uh, this one, they can be as much as 150 a yard, depending on how refined they are. And silk is a silkworm. It's a protein fiber. So is your hair. Your hair is a protein fiber. So we are now done with the um, cottons and the plant fibers. Now we're into protein fibers. Okay. So rayon was designed to imitate this. And rayon is like a quarter the price of what this is. Um, this is interesting. This is silk chiffon. This is iridescent. And iridescent means that the warp and the weft fibers are a different color. So there's pink and green going the other direction. So the iridescence, um, and iridescent uh, colors are very often complementary <coughs> colors on the color wheel. So not always, but very often. So you get this shift in color, and depending on what you put underneath them as lining, you also get a change in the way things look. This is a polyester chiffon, so I want you to see the difference. This is also iridescent. I'm going to pass the two together. This is much softer. Chiffons snag very easily. When you sew with them, you have to have brand new needles in there, fine needles, probably ballpoint needles. Because uh, it just it can snag like crazy. It's a nightmare to sew. So the next fabric is organza, and this is a little stiffer. But look how transparent it is. It has more body than chiffon. So chiffon collapses over the form. Okay, mm -hmm. it just collapses, clings, moves. Organza does not. Mm -hmm. See the difference? in the way it acts. So organza is also transparent. Very, this is very often used for blouses and sleeves because you can make these beautiful folds out of it. And these are organza with additional things woven into them. So it has a bro embroidery, it has trim, but it's basically an, or an organza. Chiffon, Chiffon with beading on it. So you see what it does to it. It makes it heavier. So the chiffon on its own is very light, but it, it still clings. Uh, this is a silk georgette. So we've gone from super transparent to translucent. Okay? Georgette has what is called a crepe finish. So it's crepe means, in this case, means like sandpaper. I mean, it's not as rough as sandpaper, but it has that feel. And so whenever I see a fabric like this where it's kind of translucent, it says it's silk and it's rough, I'm guessing it's a, it's a Georgette. Uh, this is crepe de chine. This one has lycra in it, so it has stretch. But it has, de chine, it has a shine. Uh, and crepe de chine, because it's normally thinner, is very often used for scarves and blouses. It's very soft, very thin. But this one has stretch in it because of the lycra. 
All right, then we come to charmeuse. And silk charmeuse is smooth and very, you know, it's like everybody goes, mmm. See? Um, there's the spelling on it. The thing about silk charmeuse is that, remember, we talked about a plain weave and it has stretch. So silk charmeuse was used in the 30s for bias cut dresses. And bias cut dresses are cut on the 45, which means as it goes around the body, it stretches and goes in and out around the body. And those are very, very slinky dresses. But this is a really luxurious feeling fabric. It feels really good on. Now we get into a heavier fabric. It feels like the charmeuse, only it's just a heavier weave. And this is satin. And this is what is normally used for wedding gowns. Um, it is also vintage wedding gowns will be entirely satin. They're very heavy. Now the thing about satin, and especially this kind of white, silk is very often referred to in almost food terms. The, the feel of buttercream, because it's almost oily in its feel. It's slippery and smooth, so when you feel it, you can imagine uh, Devonshire cream is like this. And the color of it is, it's a really interesting color. It's really a soft white. So this is the modern era. This is a digital print. And it is silk charmeuse, digital print. So what we have now, and you can always tell it's a print because it doesn't go all the way through. It's not woven. But the, the beauty of these digital prints is that you can do full color images. Anything you can create in Photoshop, you can print. Full color images, there's no issues with registration because you're not doing multiple plates. This is inkjet printing with special inks that are made for fabric and have to be heat set. So uh, companies like Spoonflower, this is what they're using. Now this is, a, I believe, a German company. This is a silk dupioni, and this one is iridescent. As you see, it has gold and red threads. So it's just the weave of it. And the thing about silk is that it has a smell. Um, so I will sometimes smell to see if it really is silk. But this nubby quality, there are a couple of others, Dupioni, there's a couple of others that have this kind of weave to it. Uh, raw silk is even more nubby than that. Here's a taffeta. And taffeta, can you hear it? It's one of the few fabrics that makes a sound. And the thing about taffeta is that it is also an old fabric. This one is iridescent, so it's a more modern. Um, this actually looks like what might have been a Valentino pink with the gold. Um, but the thing about taffeta is that these were 19th century ball gowns. So in 19th century literature, you might read something that says something like, she entered the room with a rustle of taffeta. Because you can hear her coming before she gets to the door. <laughs> and so because this is silk, and because it's traditionally ball gowns, that means when you hear her, you know she's expensive. OK, so I want to show you these. These are corduroy. Corduroy is cotton. So that means this is a plant fiber. And the thing about corduroy, which can be complicated, is you see where the, the, the ribbing goes parallel to the selvage. This is called a whale, W-A-L-E. It rubs in only one direction. So if you accidentally rub it the wrong way or you accidentally cut it out wrong, okay, so... I want to show you this. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that the light changes the way the color looks? Okay. So what I've done is I turned this one the other way. So that means that if you accidentally, let's say you have a skirt and you've got a front and a back, and you accidentally do this, then the front is going to look like one color and the back is going to look like a different color. So the problem with anything that has a nap or pile you have to make sure you know which direction it's going so that all your pieces get cut out the same way. And it does mean that there's a lot more waste. Okay? 
This is called a pin whale, the narrow one. This is a wide whale. They come even wider than this. Um, this is a felt, and felt, if, uh, I don't know if this is a polyester or wool felt, but felt is the fibers in wool, if it's real wool felt, have barbs, and so they will hook on to each other. So when felt is made, it is roughed, wet, uh, with um, heat and moisture roughed up together and those little barbs just sort of come packed down. But you can see this that it, you can pull on it and what, what it's doing is pulling the fibers apart. So wool, uh, all sorts of wools, and I'll be showing you wool, um, it's the reason that it's used in men's suits because it's easy to shape shoulders by steaming and blocking which is kind of pulling and steaming because it will stay in place. So um, felting is normally wool, but they do it now in polyester as well. I don't know what that is. And so this is polyester chenille, which is just this, you know, this is like, I always feel like this is bathrobe or bath rug or, I don't know. So I'm going to show you the wools. So this is another luxury fabric, which can be very expensive. Um, if you looked at Michael Levine at some of those wools, uh, depending on, you know, wool is, is a sheep. So depending on what kind of sheep it is um, and how the wool is processed from the sheep, it can be very expensive or less expensive. And wool tends to be named according to where the tradition of where those sheep come from. Uh, so this one is a wool blend. It's a fairly expensive piece. It's very similar to the weave of traditional Chanel jackets. Mm. So it, this gives you the weight of what it's like. Now, some people are very allergic to wool. They can't wear it without a lining. This is kind of interesting. This is wool silk blend. This is herringbone. You can actually see the pattern on here. So if you look really close, it's these, these long rows, and every other row goes a different direction. It goes the opposite. 45 diagonal, you'll see it. But because it has silk in it, it is slightly shiny. And this would be like a summer weight suit. It's a beautiful fabric. This is a worsted wool, but it is also a summer weight. So, I mean, it amazes me all this stuff is wool. It's very, very refined, very smooth. But it's easy to make very tailored garments with it. And then these were donated from car companies. These are also wool. So this says it's 100% wool. Uh, these are for car interiors. Um, this is, uh, see, this looks like a jacquard weave. This one is mohair. So it's a much more expensive wool. This is a wool blend, wool, acrylic, polyester, and nylon. <laughs> uh, this one is 100% wool. It says seating, so it's used for interiors. So these are upholstery fabrics, chenille blend. Um, so it's a chenille weave. This is called velveteen. Velveteen is cotton. It's an imitation of silk velvet. So plush toys, for instance, there's a children's story, the velveteen rabbit. This is a velveteen. So you get a sense of what it feels like. And it also only smooths in one direction. But it is cotton. Silk velvet, this is silk velvet. It is really soft. No, you can't have that. <laughs> so it is really, really soft. So that's the difference. That's the cotton imitation of this. Now, you see the pattern on here? So this is what is called a chemical burnout. And what they've done is they burn away the pile and leave the backing. And so it's also called Devore. This is Devore, but it is a different fiber. This one is viscous, which means it's a rayon. But this is a burnout, chemical burnout, all of these. So what it usually means is that there's one fiber for the backing and another fiber for the pile. So they're chemically burning away only one fiber. These are polyester velvet, devore. So you can see the difference between, it's soft, but it's not as soft as the brown one. So the brown one is silk. 
This is polyester. And this is what velvet looks like when it's pleated. And anything that is pleated, the pleating distorts the pattern. So if you pleat a pattern, you have to account for that, that the pleating changes the way the pattern looks. OK, this is a polyester velour, which is a cheap imitation of velvet. And a lot of these have this one. Yeah, this one has lycra in it. It has stretch. OK, so lace, um, the original method of making lace is in narrow pieces. This is the original method. This is a photograph from uh, probably Belgium. So this is called bobbin lace. And those little guys are called bobbins. So that's the original method. And lace would be expensive, lace trim, all these different kinds of laces. And anything that's a polyester lace, this is a stretch lace. It has quite a bit of stretch to it, which means it probably has lycra. Uh, it says nylon spandex blend. Um, some of them are quite delicate, and so they have this backing. And lace very often has a manufactured edge that designers will use. This is trim, but sometimes you'll get a whole piece of lace that has an edge that is manufactured. Uh, and so design, not manufactured, but it's, it's woven that way. So a designer might use this edge. Lace is not normally turned under and finished. You, you try to use this, or you use this. See, that's in, uh, in, inherently part of it. But these are manufactured laces. So they're probably polyester. They're not that expensive. Oh, here it is. They're not that expensive. So this is the bottom edge. And so a designer might use that as the finishing of a sleeve. Uh, this is, feels like a stretch lace. This is an interesting one. Yeah, it has quite a bit of give to it. See, this stuff is probably polyester. It's kind of rough. It's so you really probably rough. would have to use a, a lining behind it because it, it, wouldn't, like it wouldn't feel very good on your skin. And that's why really expensive lace that is truly bobbin lace can be very, very expensive, and especially antique pieces of lace that are just sections. That's all they are. And they are, would normally, the tradition of that would be to be applied onto a garment, not woven into it. So because the bobbin lace was so small, that's how it would be used. But now, all the manufactured stuff, including that red one, which is kind of an interesting drapey quality to it, uh, there's just a lot more options. Thank you. Mm-hmm.